Hello, my name is Robert Haddad, and today I'll be speaking to you about the topic, the church in decline. Do we want the solution? All faithful Catholics know that the church is currently going through a very serious crisis, one that has been escalating since the mid-1960s. This is an existential crisis of faith, a crisis that has seen our church, or Christ church, in relentless decline in all its so-called spiritual KPIs, namely mass attendance, the number of baptisms, confirmations, and First Holy Communions, the number of marriages, the vocations to the priesthood and religious life, all in decline, while parish and Catholic school closures and defections from the Catholic faith skyrocket. Recently, I read an article about parish closures in the United States, which made depressing reading. Since 2015, 113 parishes have been closed in the Archdiocese of Chicago alone. This is naturally followed from mass attendance shrinking 72% in that city between the years 2000 and 2015. Other major U.S. archdioceses have closed and merged parishes in similar numbers. Milwaukee closed 135, St. Louis closed 116, and New York closed 82 parishes over the same period. Overall, the number of U.S. parishes have declined nearly 15% between 1990 and 2020 from more than 19,000 to now just under 17,000. Other statistics tell an even more concerning picture for the church in the United States. Since 1965, baptisms have declined from 1.089 million to 546,000 per annum. Marriages have declined from 426,000 to 132,000 per annum. Weekly mass attendance, which once stood at 54.9%, is now down to 23.4%. The number of priests has dropped from 59,000 to 35,500, while religious sisters have fallen from 161,000 to 41,000. Former Catholics now number 29.5 million across America. Why has this happened? There are many deep-seated reasons. Poor catechesis, uninspirational leadership, poor preaching, never mentioning sin, the devil, hell, diminishing Marian devotions, abandoning apologetics, loss of interest in converting non or anti-Catholics, liturgical abuses, public dissent against official church teaching, rampant heterodoxy in the Catholic academy, seminaries and schools, homosexual infiltration of the clergy, sexual abuse and other scandals, the revolt against Humanae Vitae, the surrender to the agenda of the sexual revolution, resulting in declining marriage rates, increasing divorce rates, and declining birth rates. Together, all of the above and more have resulted in the most dramatic decline of faith and practice in the church's history. But it is not just in the United States that this decline is occurring. Similar declines have been witnessed in Australia, with even worse declines occurring in most Western European nations. This is in contrast to the church in Africa and Asia, which continues to experience positive growth. What is the solution to this crisis? Those on the so-called leftist side within the church are sure as to what needs to be done. They cry out, modernize the church, bring it into the 21st century. This would involve 
allowing priests to marry, ordaining women to the ministerial priesthood, abandoning what they see as restrictive and outdated sexual morality, recognizing, blessing and celebrating gay marriage, allowing the laity to appoint bishops, run parishes, allowing the laity to vote on doctrine, changing it as they see fit, more synods, more local councils, more bureaucracy, basically full democratization of the church. According to the above, once all this is in place, the church will finally have caught up with the times and become relevant and the people will start flocking back in. However, we have already seen this type of agenda put into place just here in Australia, both with the Anglican and Uniting Churches. What has been the result? Further confusion, further division, further relentless decline, one to two percent practicing rates, further irrelevance, heading now towards total dissolution and disappearance. The lesson here is that those who have caused the crisis are not the ones who can solve it. There are real solutions to the crisis. What are they? Restore belief in Catholicism as the fullness of truth and the means of sanctification. Restore belief in the Catholic Church as the one true church and necessary for salvation. Restore apologetics in schools, academia and seminaries. Restore the learning of Thomistic theology and philosophy. Seek and welcome the conversion of non and anti-Catholics, including Jews and Muslims. Restore preaching on the four last things, death, judgment, heaven and hell. Revitalize Marian devotions, especially the rosary. Make known the lives of the saints and promote devotion to the same. Promote popular devotions such as the Sacred Heart, the Divine Mercy, the message of Our Lady of Fatima, etc. Proclaim the permanency of the sacrament of marriage. Make known the teaching within Humanae Vitae to restore generous and healthy birth rates. Promote family prayer life. Publicly support homeschoolers, encourage those with same-sex attraction to practice chastity and abstinence, promote vocations to priestly and religious life, restore reverent liturgy, institute regular parish Eucharistic adoration and benediction, make parishes centres of adult faith formation, Bible study, study of theology of the body, youth catechesis, specialist speakers. Establish men's groups within parishes and dioceses. Challenge the centres holding power positions in the church's structures, schools and universities. Dismiss those who refuse to repent. Support laity who wish to engage in higher orthodox theological and philosophical studies. Do all of the above with gentleness and reverence. All the above worked in the past and can work again. The great tragedy, however, is that so many within the power structures of the church in the Western world know of the above solutions, but are not interested. In fact, they consciously reject the same. They are like the sick, who are offered the cure, but do not want it. Ultimately, those who reject the cure inevitably succumb to the disease and disappear. The same will occur to the leftist modernist forces within the church. But faithful Catholics, there will always be. We must be different. We must be willing to advocate for and implement the real solutions wherever we can, even if all seems lost and hopeless. Because, because it is not through our own strength, 
that the victory will be won, but through Christ's strength, who is always faithful and true to his promises, and who promised that the gates of hell will not prevail. On this positive note, I conclude this presentation. Thank you and God bless.